Welcome to Aditel's ACAL video series, built to help you get more out of your calibration software. This video is about how to set up ACAL before you perform any calibrations. ACAL is a big piece of software, and there are a lot of settings that you can change so that it better fits your process. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to navigate throughout ACAL and change some of its most important settings. When you log into ACAL as an administrator, you should see the tabs on the top and buttons below that. The tabs represent the main sections of ACAL. You'll be using these often, so let's describe each of them. The Home tab takes you to the home screen, which you're looking at now. The Cal Center tab is centered around the calibration of your devices. We'll talk about it more later when we set up your calibration solutions. The Task Center contains various task-related activities, such as transferring information between ACAL and Automatic Calibrator, managing your 2Cal list, and auditing. The Data Center allows you to view data from your as-found or as-left calibrations. You can use it to review your calibration data before it is turned into a certificate. The Certificates tab is where the certs you generate are saved and can be looked up. The DUT tab, or Device Under Test tab, contains a list of all devices you are testing or calibrating. The References tab contains a list of your standards, that is, a list of the units you'd use to perform a calibration. The Settings menu is used for controlling settings. We'll dive into this menu later on in this video. The system menu is used to manage users, roles, and the software log. We'll also dive into this menu a little later. The toolbox contains a variety of helpful tools you may find useful, such as a pressure converter and a tolerance calculator. If you travel back to the home screen, we'll take a look at the buttons too. The buttons on the left allow you to do a calibration for a specific type of instrument. You can also do this from the Cal Center, but I find the buttons to be more convenient. The buttons in the middle allow you to quickly add DUTs or references to your system. The buttons on the right allow you to manage certain tasks easily, such as units you'd like to calibrate or data you'd like to certify. Now that you know how to perform basic navigations, let's jump to the next step, setting up user login information. You can do this by clicking the System tab up at the top and then clicking the User Management submenu on the left. This is typically how ACAL is set up, tabs on the top and a submenu on the left. In this case, there is also an additional submenu which allows us to manage either users or roles. Let's start by creating a new user. Let's call him John, give him a password, and let's just say he's a calibration assistant. We don't have a calibration assistant role yet, so let's just assign him to the role of engineer. And we can change that later. Once we are done, we can click OK. The user has been created and can now be used to log in. Let's take a look at roles for a second. As you can see, there are four default roles. Let's take a look at engineers, which we assign John to. As you can see, they have quite a few permissions. They are able to do everything except manage users and access the system log. Everything else they can do. A lab assistant doesn't need to do all of these things. Let's create a role that's better suited for John. Looking at the permissions, Home tab access is a good idea, as is the Cal Center. Under Data Center, we don't really want him to be able to generate a certificate, 
That needs to be done by our senior lab managers. So let's give him access, but uncheck that specific option. He needs to see certs, but shouldn't be able to delete them. He does need access to DUTs and references. But we don't want him worrying about settings or system properties. The rest of the options are alright though. Now that we're done, click OK. Now that we've created the role, let's assign him to it. Open his profile and let's change him from the engineering role to the lab assistant role. Then click OK. If you log in as John now, you will notice that you don't have access to all the menus you had access to as an admin. Great, it worked. Once you've set up all the users you need, it's probably a good idea to take a look at some of the settings next. The first thing we'll want to do is under the Settings tab in the Laboratory submenu. You'll want to create one or multiple laboratories to use for your calibrations. This information will be printed on your calibration certificates, so it's important. Select the main one and click Edit, or if you don't see a laboratory listed, click New. You can enter a laboratory name, address, main contact, telephone number, and a lot more. You can also assign certain users to this specific lab. Click OK when you're done. Next, take a look at the Calibration Settings submenu. The first thing you're going to notice is a section called DUT Number. The idea behind this is that there are a lot of numbers you associate with the devices you calibrate. For example, your DUT probably has a serial number, and it also probably is tied to a purchase order or a sales order. You may want to store those numbers in ACAL. By default, DUTs have three numbers that are associated with them, but that number can be increased up to five. You can also customize the fields further by making them required, specifying that they are unique, or renaming them so they can represent something else. In this case, I'm actually going to rename order number to be PO number. It's probably a good idea if you take a look at the other subsections as well, although I don't suggest you change anything until you find out what you need for your calibrations. Next. Go up to the top and switch to Pressure Instruments. Here you can set the CAL cycle lengths for each type of instrument in ACAL. For example, I can set the default due date for dial pressure gauges to be a year after I calibrate them. When you're done with this, click Save. The last thing you'll want to do before performing a calibration is to set up what is called a calibration solution. The best way to describe what a calibration solution is, is to give an example. Let's say that you have some units you calibrate that use oil as a medium, and some units that use air as a medium. Most of the time, you're not going to use the same reference to calibrate both the oil and the air system, as it could cause serious contamination problems. Instead, you'll probably have one set of instruments you use to calibrate your air units, and another set of instruments you use to calibrate your oil units. A separate set of units for each type. In ACAL, these separate sets of units are called calibration solutions. To create a calibration solution, start by going to the Cal Center tab. On the left, you'll notice several types of instruments. Pick one that you want to set up a calibration solution for and select it. Next at the top, you'll see a button called Cal Solution Library. Click it and a window will open you'll see a list of pre-existing calibration solutions. A calibration solution can have a pressure source, a pressure controller, a pressure reference, and a multimeter. Take a look at each of these solutions and see if any of them fits your process. For example, if you had a simple pump and a dial gauge, you'd want P-M- pump and gauge. On the other hand, if you had a simple pump and an Adtel 681 digital pressure gauge, 
you'd want p-ha-681. When you find the solution that fits your situation, check the corresponding box. If none of them fit your situation, you can create a custom solution by clicking New Solution at the top. You can then drag and drop devices over to create your custom solution. Make sure to give the solution a number, a name, and make sure to click Enable. Then click Save. Go find the new solution you created in the list and give it a check. Then click Add to My Cal Solution. You'll notice that the selected solutions now appear in your main list. Repeat this process for the other types of instruments until you're satisfied. Once this is complete, you're ready to perform a calibration. Have any questions? Take a look at the user manual, which contains additional information in case you have any trouble. Also, feel free to send us an email at service at adatel.com. You can also check out the other videos on how to use ACAL on our YouTube channel or our website.